Hmm. So this is what it's like to be out here. Okay. I might have to cut the actors a bit more slack. It's a bit different when you're out here with the lights on. You see, normally I'm either backstage or in the workshop during theater productions because I work in stage crew, the magic that makes a, uh, productions more than just a bunch of people standing around on stage. More specifically, before the shows, I work in set, excuse me, set production. And when all these seats are filled, I help to move that set around. I have been in stage crew since the start of my freshman year. And since that point, I've learned the ins and the outs of this theater, from the workshop to the stage. Although we do have a faculty supervisor, between us students, it tends to fall on the person with the most experience to direct everyone when they aren't around. Each year, that responsibility has landed on the shoulders of a stage crew veteran. That person influences not just how the show will go, but how the crew itself comes together. Their personality defines how crew feels. And it's to the point that whenever I think of old productions, the first person to pop into my head is always that year's leader. So, thing is, both of the last two years, that leader was a senior, both crew mainstays. So, you can imagine how I felt when, during last year's musical, I realized that come this year, the leader was going to be me. I was just a sophomore, but beyond the leader, I was the most experienced. I didn't trust myself to handle that kind of responsibility. I mean, sure, I'd spent however much time backstage and worked on however many shows, but at the end of the day, all I really knew how to do was to measure, cut, and move wood. Third run of that show, somewhere around halfway through, somebody from the other side of the stage runs into the workshop. Apparently, one of the set pieces, specifically a bench, had broken. One of the connectors between the legs had snapped. We did have a replacement bench, but it was the wrong color. Something that everybody learns when they're backstage during a live theater performance is that the priority is always the show's audience. Each and every show should provide the same exact great experience as the rest of them. So if something goes wrong, you're meant to fix it, while still making sure it's safe. One of the last scenes of that show had an actor standing on that bench. Using the replacement bench would have been the safer option, but everything I had learned in crew up until that point told me it was the wrong one. I tried to fix it. If I was to summarize what I did, I grabbed two pieces of lumber from the trash can in the workshop that were roughly the right color and screwed them into the legs of the bench. It was a simple fix, something that I probably could have done in year one, but there's one thing that made this fix different from anything else I had ever done in stage crew. I didn't ask anyone else what I should be doing. I just did it. I was fully focused in on the problem at hand, nothing else. I can remember the specifics as to what I did to do to fix the bench, even down to what the pieces of wood looked like, but nothing that surrounded it. I even struggle to remember how long the fix itself actually took me. I mean, logically, I know it must have been six to eight minutes, but if I try to remember, I can't. I was in what's called a state of flow. I'm sure that everybody here has a general idea as to what flow is, but the exact definition of flow is a bit harder to pin down. One article from uh, the Educational Research Quarterly by researchers Cartulus and Erilmez says that flow is described as a mental state where one is involved in an activity so completely that there is a state of complete immersion in an activity and time seems to fly away. Basically the smart way of saying time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> there are a lot, uh, it's that point of focus where you get irritated when somebody interrupts your process and snaps you out of it. It could be when you're working on a hard math equation in class and your teacher stops everyone, or when you're researching an interesting presentation and your boss walks in. There are a lot of factors that can influence a person's experience of flow. But one of the more interesting ones is discussed in another article titled The Role of Flow in Eudaimonic Wellbeing. This article says that flow tends to be centered around the likelihood of control, particularly the notion of exerting control in challenging circumstances. That first article from Cartulus and Erilmez also mentions the effects that happen when a challenge is outside of a person's abilities. Flow leads to anxiety when the challenge is too high for a person's abilities and leads to boredom when the challenge is too low. I was confident when it came to using the tools backstage, but actually proving it to myself had the biggest impact. That time pressure gave it the perfect amount of challenge, and the fix itself was extremely enjoyable to work on, which makes sense, as some researchers, such as Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, have described flow as a form of enjoyment. Actually, give a TED talk on it. That bench fix gave me the biggest boost to my self-confidence that I have ever had. 
Watching people build stuff backstage or being told that I knew what I was doing had made me confident to a point, but actually proving it to myself had the biggest impact. That bench fix gave me a big boost to something called self-efficacy, a term coined by the Canadian-American psychologist Albert Bandura in his 1977 article, Self-Efficacy Towards a Unifying Theory of Behavioral Change. The Cambridge Dictionary defines self-efficacy as a person's belief or confidence that they can be successful when carrying out a particular task. In other words, it's how confident you are in your ability to do something. There are, Bandura argued that self-efficacy is one of the main factors that influ influence a person's decision to try an activity. People with low self-efficacy are more likely to shun the idea of making an attempt, whereas people with high self-efficacy are more likely to have a crack at it. But that's not everything. There are extensive benefits to having a high self-efficacy. People with high self-efficacy exert greater effort and persist longer than students who doubt their capabilities. Yet another article, yes, another one, published in the International Journal of Technology and Education and Science, said that showed that students with a higher academic self-efficacy were more likely to get into a state of academic flow. So, you know, that sounds great, but how do you make it go up? Well, Bandura argued that there are four main factors that can influence a person's self-efficacy. Performance accomplishments, vicarious experience, verbal persuasion, and physiological states. The most important factor out of all these is by far performance accomplishments, which are, quote, based on personal mastery experiences. Mastery experiences are the situations where you actually try and attempt the action. Examples of this could be cooking a new recipe for the first time, riding a bike for the first time, giving a TEDx talk on stage for the first time, and trying to remember your script. You get the idea. That bench fix was my biggest mastery experience backstage by far. Watching that bench go back out there, seeing an actor stand on it and not fall, and knowing that had I done nothing, something would have been wrong, gave me the biggest boost to my self-efficacy that I have ever had. And it's become such a core memory at this point that I can't help but smile when I think about it. And it taught me a lesson that I really think more people should take to heart. If you see a way to fix a bench, and you know how to fix it, there's really no reason not to at least try to fix it. Self-efficacy and flow are tied to each other in a way that really can't be ignored. Your self-efficacy determines what gets you into a state of flow, and being in a state of flow makes it, more e uh, makes it easier to, get, uh, in to increase your self-efficacy and much more memorable when you do. They pull each other up and down, but regardless of which way they go, you learn something new. It's not a guarantee that you're going to succeed when you put yourself in that hot seat, or, I guess, hot bench. But uh, I think that Stephen King put it best in his essay of reading to write. Quite often, the bad books have more to teach than the good ones. Regardless of whether you succeed or you fail, you learn something new, whether that be a newfound confidence or the limit to your current abilities. Thing is, without putting yourself in that situation where you aren't just challenged, but pushed to live up to that challenge, any change that you make to your self-efficacy is going to be minimal. There's a reason that you don't just watch videos in math class, but actually try and do the equations themselves. It's the best and most fun way to increase your self-efficacy. Not only can that taking that risk be both extremely fun and beneficial, it can also just have such a huge impact on your self-efficacy that five years down the line, you won't be able to imagine a world in which you didn't take that risk. Like I said at the start, I have lived and breathed the air backstage for over two years at this point. And I know that if I stay back there, especially since the bench fix, I'm going to be comfortable, leader or not. And yet, I decided that this year, I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try my hand out here on stage with a performance. Not just TEDx. I also acted in this year's high school one-act plays. And if I'm being completely honest, I think that was one of the best decisions that I have made in high school. And I took that risk to prove to myself that I was capable of being out on this side of the curtains as well. And I know that each of you, uh, you guys know an area that you want to prove yourself in as well. And I also know that you know the exact way to do just that. So don't just put yourself out there. Put yourself in there, into that activity, past the curtains and out onto that stage and give it a shot. Believe me, it's worth it. Thank you.